Hello and welcome to the On the Couch podcast, the podcast that gives you the view from the therapist chair. I'm your host, John Dennis, a licensed professional counselor. You're listening to OTC episode 39 with Laura Heck, co-host of the Marriage Therapy Radio Show. Hello again, OTC listeners. Thank you for stopping by and joining me for OTC episode 39. And obviously, I hope you all are doing well uh, here Here in Pennsylvania. We're about, about to the end of week seven of quarantine, I think. And yeah, I don't know. It all bleeds together. I, I don't remember what day it is anymore. So whatever. Um, most of the states are, you know, trying to or setting dates to open things back up, uh, you know, in phases and kind of test out the waters, um, you know, fingers crossed that that goes well and, and we don't see a resurgence of this and, and we are able to gradually continue through the phases and and open things back up fully. And with the, this episode today, I wanted to bring an episode focusing on marriage and relationships. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've done a lot of work, uh, read a lot of books in terms of, of business and business leadership and, and different concepts. And Simon Sinek is a, is a huge part of that. And, uh, you know, his book, It Starts With Why, that, that concept of what is your why. And the why for this episode is, you know, relationships are, are experiencing crazy amounts of stress as well. And uh, during this quarantine, you know, some people in relationships, they're having to quarantine separately. Some people are quarantined together. Some are quarantined and they have kids. You know, it it's kind of runs the spectrum, but... That idea of uh, just the stress and um, needing to, to navigate, you know, how do you do this together, either whether it's during quarantine or, or after, you know, what are some, some things that can help improve relationships? And with my guest, Laura Heck, uh, you'll hear, you know, in the interview, but she is just an amazing one of a kind. Um, she is just you know, balls to the wall. Uh, I mean, she's a, she's so much fun. She uh, is just a, an amazing, amazing expert uh, in relationships. And you hear her talk about how she essentially like hustled her way into an internship at the Gottman Institute and now is responsible for conducting a lot of the the training workshops for the seven principles for making marriage work. And she's a co-host for the Marriage Therapy Radio Show. Um, She's leading or co-leading the uh, Epic Wives Experiment and has her hand in so many different things around the topic of relationships. And I I thought, you know, when I when I found out about her, I was like, what what better person to have on to talk about some of this stuff. And uh, hopefully you're able to take a couple of, of tips and techniques and things to look into that can improve your relationship beyond uh, quarantine. So take care. Hope you enjoy. I have on the show today Laura Heck, who is a certified Gottman therapist. You're a co-host for the Marriage Therapy Radio Show, and I'm sure many, many other things. I'll just leave it short like that. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I was really stoked we were able to put this together and get things out. How is life on your side of the quarantine? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think probably three days ago, I would have said, it's amazing. I'm loving homeschooling my kid. I love my home. We live in a resort town, so a lot of people come to the town that we live in to vacation. So we're so fortunate. We have lakes and rivers and mountains and golfing. And That sounds picturesque, yeah. <laughs> it really is picturesque. I'll actually send you a photo and, and it'll knock your socks off. Nice. Uh, I can be jealous. Exactly. So Yeah, three days ago, I would say everything was fine. I am not an anxious person and I woke up 
I think it was Friday morning with anxiety and it was very odd. And talking to a lot of my friends, I think a lot of people have hit that moment where it's just that compound effect of we're in week six of quarantine. And I had the pleasure of Mm -hmm. experiencing anxiety and, and working through the process of what do you do to manage it and also to feel the feelings and understand where it might be coming from. But I'm back on it Monday morning, back on the horse, feeling great. Had a chance to kind of yeah. put yourself through your own little therapy session and do all the things you teach other people to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have a very patient husband and I just explained, this is what's going on. Super unexpected. So we'll just roll with the punches and I'm going to try to not take this out on anybody. I think we've definitely gone through bouts of losing it and like getting it back together and like everybody in the family has their individual moment or day where they're just like today's not my day right it's definitely been a long slog so tell me how did you get through the Gottman certification to become a certified trainer and doing the seven principles stuff and then hooking up with Zach for the show you want to hear the history yeah give me the backstory for those listeners who are unfamiliar of who Dr. John and Julie Gottman are they are world-renowned researchers and therapists in the field of couples therapy. And their home is Orcas Island, Washington. But the Gottman Institute is based in Seattle. And that's where I did my graduate work to become a therapist. I just kind of was stuck. I think a lot of people sort of sit in that space of not really knowing what to do once they graduate and they could pour themselves into a therapy position where they're making $15 an hour trying to pay off student loans. I just remember like really shooting for the stars and thinking this is the guy who I read about in every graduate research paper book and I just wanted to work for them. So I contacted them and said, I'd like to be an employee of yours. And of course they said, that's really interesting person I've never heard about. We don't have a position open, but thanks for offering. And I essentially just said, I will work for free. I will sit in your conference room and I will add value in some way or another. And they had never had an intern at that point, but I kind of weaseled my way in. I just consider it sort of like a hustle. I hustled it. And within about a year, I had made it from an unpaid intern position where they didn't know anything about me to adding value to being a paid customer service person to then being director of professional development. So it moved pretty quickly. And I just truly believe in getting your foot in the door of where you want to be and prove yourself and you will get to where you want to be. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, to be able to hustle like that, like you said, and just go from that to where you're at now is self-made. Wow. Yeah. So I keep thinking like, where else am I going to add value? How else can I hustle? Who else do I want to be a mentor in my life or steering me in a certain direction? And I think the next avenue that I'm interested in is sex therapy. So I will glum on to maybe Emily Nagoski. She seems pretty yeah. cool. Maybe I'll glum on to her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of set the bar real high on yourself, like right out of the gate. So <laughs> totally did, right? And then the radio show and Zach. Yeah. Yeah. Zach and I found each other at a got training. He said he was not certified yet, nor was I. I was working at the Institute as an employee. And we were putting on like a level two or level three training. And he shows up and he sits next to me and he's very intrusive and like assumes friendship very early on. And I just remember thinking, this is just a a weird dude, but I want to have a beer with him. And well, he told me that he just was sort of taken by me in a certain way. Just, I mean, he has like a large respect for smart women. And I think he saw that in me and I do say so myself. So we became friends and it started off where we would get together in a pub over a pint of beer. We would talk about clients that we were seeing. So consultation, we were just doing it. We we're both in private practice doing consultation in a bar. Mad Men style. Yeah, it totally <laughs> was Mad Men style minus like the gin martini, but yeah. it was really fun. And eventually we grew into creating products for couples and just recognizing that there were pain points that we could help solve and help, you know, bring some light to couples beyond our reach. We really wanted to reach more people. So we created a video course for couples Mm -hmm. called Marriage in Motion, which is pretty cool because you get to see our faces and we teach couples moving them through that and then quickly realized that we didn't have an audience. I mean, we created this really beautiful course, but we didn't have anybody that actually knew about it. 
So we started the podcast and the whole idea behind the podcast was we want to entertain and also inform in a really lighthearted way. And that's where the Marriage Therapy Radio podcast started. I would definitely say you achieved the goal. Just listening to the episodes, obviously you have a lot of fun with it. It's that having a coffee, having a pint, talking back and forth and sharing of your own lives, but also training and you know what you're trying to help couples with. So that's awesome. We're pretty happy with it. It's definitely one of those things that started off as a hobby and we had zero and we still have zero plan. I mean, we literally just hop on and it's just like, hey, what do you want to talk about today? And through conversation, it's kind of like being a fly on the wall in our early conversations in a pub where we would say like, what are you seeing in your office? What's coming up right now? And then we just dive into it. And we have very different ways of looking at our work with couples. And that's what I think is really fun is we can push back on one another and say, I don't actually agree with what you did there. I think I've got a better solution. Yeah. And so in the midst of all of this, what are you seeing from couples? What are you seeing that they're going through right now in the midst of quarantine? Well, I think it's surprising, actually. As an introvert, I definitely thought, okay, you have people that are used to everyone going to their own space in the office, having their commutes to be able to unwind with, and now everyone is stuck within four walls. And I just thought the intensity level, the pressure, it's going to be a pressure cooker in that home, and their lives are going to explode. Um, And it turns out that I have found so many couples being so much more intentional because all of the distractions of life have been removed. You can't distract yourself Mm -hmm. with going on a double date with other people. Now you are having to be really intentional in order to create that moment with your children and with your spouse, your significant other, that you are, you can actually intentionally connect. And so I just find with all of the distractions removed, people are enjoying their lives together a whole lot more than they expected. I think on my end, with still doing couples therapy, a lot of people, they're at least like, okay, we're really not doing horrible. We're getting time together that we badly, badly needed. Yeah. And like you said, like, all the other distractions have pretty much been removed for the most part. But I've also found some of them are not not really diving really deep in the therapy sessions at this time. It's sort of the mm-hmm. mental health check-in of, how are you doing? You guys staying sane? Are you doing okay? Using the four horsemen, you able to call time out? But they're not really diving into some of the stuff that we would have been in a normal session, I guess I would say. Yeah. I mean, everything's new and different. And so it is really tough to continue on. I think that's just true in general of everything is that we basically, you know, took the snow globe, shook it up, and now everything's starting to settle. But in the midst of the chaos, it is challenging to go back to what you might have previously been diving deep into Mm -hmm. because there's just not space for it at the moment. There's no like cognitive space, emotional space. We're all just sort of holding on for dear life, figuring out while everything settles, what's going to be but you know there's a lot of interesting things that have happened that I have found pretty helpful to talk through with couples and I would say number one is talking about the habits or the rituals that you had in place you can't continue on with the same rituals or habits everything is completely new and you really have to be super intentional so if you thought you had it if you thought you were rocking as a couple and you've got your habits and your rituals down it's time to reevaluate and have that conversation again and say whatever we had going before isn't going to work now you know i had one person that came to me recently and they just said I love greeting my partner at the door. I call it the golden retriever. I love greeting my partner like a golden retriever when they come home from work and, and he loves it. He finds that it's just super respectful. And she said, now we're together all the time and there's no coming home for many. And so it kind of going back and saying, Oh, so what's at the heart of this? How do you think he feels? Cause I'm doing individual therapy with this person about the relationship. And she said, well, I think it's a level of respect and honor that he feels when he comes in the door. So if you unwind that and at the heart of this ritual is, you know, demonstrating your respect and honor for your partner, how could you do that in a different way? That's a different ritual that you can create. And so she came up with a different ritual to really demonstrate that respect and honor, which was great. But it is something I think is important for couples in the midst of COVID to reevaluate those rituals. That's one of the things, even outside of the couples counseling, I mean, pretty much across the board in the, the teletherapy sessions I've been having, especially that first week was, what are your stress relievers? And talking as a family or as a couple about, okay, what can you keep? What's changed? Are you going to go back to some old ones? Are you going to try some new ones? 
And, and then, yeah, how to call that time out in the midst of a quarantine. So I've been kind of following along on your social media. You've been posting the like quarantine conversation starters, yeah. which is, has been awesome. Kind of a, a iteration off of the Love Maps exercise. I guess I would hit you with your own question of, so if you were going to be an Olympic event, which Olympic event would you be in and why? Yeah, guys, I mean, that's a great question. It's funny. I haven't really thought about some of these all rules off the table. Like I don't actually have to be good at any of this. But if I was to be in an Olympic event, gosh, I think I would want to be in a team sport because I enjoy working with teams. You know, that I mean, that's such a good question. Part of me is thinking how much I love gymnastics and those women gymnasts are so powerful. And while it's a team sport, it's also very much an individual sport. So I'm going to go with synchronized swimming. Really? Okay, nice. I'm definitely like a winter sports kind of guy so i i would have gone really? with like yeah either ice hockey or snowboarding yeah i, I kind of grew up snowboarding so that's always been the dream is like you know sean white just throwing down so big mountain or do you want to hit the jumps and and like see like go in the park or... I, either or honestly cool. yeah that was kind of the, the one and then the other was the the book to yes. movie adaptation i know zach's been really big lately on like yeah. peanut butter falcon yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> and a, a few of the others. Any thoughts on your end? Or? Yeah. Well, I have one that I was really disappointed in. So Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the original was amazing. But then when Johnny Depp came out and did the second adaptation, if you've ever seen it, I mean, Johnny Depp uh -huh. is brilliant, but they really did not nail the Oompa Loompas. And if you've seen uh, it, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. It's kind of a weird, like single character I just recently read a book and I have yet to watch the movie, so it's not fair, but my favorite book that I have read in the last, I would say, 15 years is called The Power of One. It's a South African novel mm. um, about a young boy and the people that he encounters along his lifetime that have enriched and added these life lessons. Mm. And um, I think it's a really powerful story. And I know that the movie is out there and I'm just waiting to get sick. And I'm probably should not say that in this time of uh, the virus. <laughs> But I'm waiting to binge watch at least The Power of One. But I think that's probably a pretty a pretty amazing adaptation of a book that was turned into a movie. Nice. Okay. How about you? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking I, I really liked uh, Chuck Palahniuk's Fight Club. Yes. And that was like one of my favorite movies. And the other I was going to say was it's a little bit of a cheat because it's a, it's a HBO series, but Band of Brothers. I haven't seen it. The books were amazing and the film adaptation of it was, I thought was even better. But that idea of kind of like you were saying, the rituals of like over coffee, over something, you know, but put the phone down, like unless you're going to Laura's Instagram, you know, <laughs> Put the phone down yeah. and, you know, don't have the TV on. And I know you and Zach were talking in a, I think it was the last episode about, you know, actually look at each other, which even mm -hmm. being quarantined seems like such a weird thing a lot of times of like, no, actually like sit down and look at each other and talk to each other. Right. Yeah. There's the statistic out there that couples are probably not true any longer, but um, these LA based couples were only looking each other eye to eye for 35 minutes a week, which is just bonkers wow. to me. That's mind blowing. Yeah. And that doesn't account for good conversation. Like what I'm hoping to start with some of these open-ended questions, that's just sitting and talking to your partner and saying things like, Hey, uh, you know, it looks like that the lease needs to be renewed on our truck. What do you think we should do about that? Or have you, you know, contacted our kids teacher and just sort of the shop talk. So mm -hmm. I'm really interested in having people have meaningful conversation and getting rid of the shop talk. It's just, it's not going to further the, the connection in the relationship anymore. Yeah. It made me think of a lot of times when we're using the four horsemen, that's when we're, when we're looking at our partner a lot of times, like we, when we really yeah. want to like yeah. hit them with something negative, <laughs> that's when we look at each other. <laughs> that is so funny. I mean, nothing's going to get your attention more than like some pretty solid criticism, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I've never really thought about that. Yeah. So the conversation starters has just been a way for me to be able to just give some, some serve in some way, I guess, is a way to put it and give people just one conversation to think about and also get your kids involved. There is no way to avoid 
the children in the home. And I think that if they have meaningful conversation with you too, we're creating memories right now. And I want for the kids to be able to look back and say, this was a major life event that happened. And what are the memories that you remember? And if they're saying things like we sat around and we played board games all day long and we had meaningful conversation, we looked at one another, we had home cooked meals, then you're nailing it. You are doing what I think we're figuring out is what this coronavirus is really doing is it's bringing a lot of focus and intentionality back on the family. I mean, it's obviously sad that it comes at that cost, but it's the idea of, look, did you live through it? You're still able to eat. You still had a house. You were together and some of those positive memories. Julie Ohana does culinary art therapy. (gasps) My mind is blown. Go on. Yeah. (laughs) So I saw uh, you were making SOG the other day, I think. Yes, I was. And I was like, wow, okay. You're just, you're not going for like, PB and J, you're making like Indian food. Yes. Yeah. I went from SOG to pad thai the next night and I had an epic failure. Um, I bought the the wrong type of noodle. So I ended up with rather than like a, a floury noodle, I had rice noodle that just dissolved. It was meant for soup. So the flavor was good, but it was basically like mashed mashed potato consistency. <laughs> it's all it's all going to end up the same. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but one of the things she's really big on, yeah, the family meal and the idea of almost getting like that box of cards from like Trivial Pursuit and having that on the table. Cool. And you you know you pull from that and ask questions around yes. the table. Yes, um, I love that idea. So just real quick, give people just your social media handle. Where where can they find you and follow you? Yeah, Laura E. Heck. So Laura, L-A-U-R-A, and then my middle initial E for Elizabeth and last name Heck, like what the heck, Laura E. Heck. And then you'll find a pretty picture where I am all done up, um, which is the rare (laughs) occasion. Um, Normally, I am a mom in my mom uniform, a.k.a. Lululemon or the off-brand Lululemon. Yeah, with my hair in a ponytail. Um, And it's a lot of family stuff, but I recognize that what I put out there can be seen by other. It's an open profile, but I do try and serve as much as I can to couples and giving them just an inside peek of what's going on and how can you improve your relationship. Nice. I feel very honored that you got so dressed up and you should as well, because I wore my good sweatpants today. So this is... (laughs) Yeah, I put lipstick on, but I'm not going to stand up. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, the uh, the business mullets, mm-hmm. as they call it. That's right. <laughs> so are there other things that others can focus on during this time? And even beyond. I mean, obviously, it's it's not stuff that, okay, well, just for quarantine, you should be doing this. We, we should have been doing this before, and we should be doing it after. Yeah, I think Zach brought up a really important point, which I've <sighs> – it's funny because I had told you that Friday was a tough day for me. I had, you know, like anxiety and it was not double me over anxiety, but it was to the point where this is new, this is different. And I don't like this feeling. And, um, just sort of something really resonated and clicked for me, which is the idea that for many of us, we had to wipe our calendars clean and whatever we had planned for the spring, the summer, amazing camping trips, vacations, graduations, celebrations, everything is, is off your calendar. And that can be kind of earth shattering for people who have been planning and looking forward to these things. And what Zach said is we really should have a next. We need to take a look at our calendars and plan the next thing. And I love that idea, because it can be small, it can be on a personal scale, it can be on a personal business scale of just thinking, you know, what are my next goals that I want to hit? Or what's the next thing I want to, like I said, uh, becoming a sex therapist would be incredible. And that's something that gives me something to look forward to, to research. It might be that you decide you finally want to buy that RV, or you really want to get into uh, trail running, whatever it might be. So having a next thing, and I'm, I'm a big fan and believer in everyone having their own individual individual next thing, but also as a couple talking about what is the next thing that we want to un- take on. Now, the idea of when all this is over, what's the next thing? No, I think we need to be planning for what can we do in the midst of quarantine. But also, yeah, I, I mean, you can have long-term next that you're planning. So one thing that I got lit up about, and I cannot stop thinking about it, is the idea of living internationally. And I'm realizing that that timeline is sort of coming up because I think 10 is that magic age where we want to start with our first international exchange, if you will. And um, so having really cool conversations and researching 
where do we want to live? And do we all want to go as a family? What would we do with our pet? What would we do with our home? And that provides just a feeling of togetherness in as a family unit to be able to have that conversation and have that next thing. So that's, that's definitely something that lit me up. And I think a lot of couples can find some joy in in planning their next. I have a friend of ours. They're a couple that does a lot with like premarital counseling and things like that. And one of the things they talk a lot about is a six month check in. So they'll every six months plan a getaway and talk about, okay, how'd the last six months go? What's the next six months going to look like? And really trying to be intentional about just all those different areas, whether that's career-wise or financially, sexually, you know, any of those areas. I was really surprised you didn't say Jake Gyllenhaal was going to be your next. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I am so obsessed. It is, it's really funny. He's pretty cute. I, maybe your audience has a connection. My audience has not reached out there you to go. me yet. Go, girl. So, go unplug it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so y'all are listening. Um, I am a married, happily married woman, but that doesn't mean that joy can be, um, found in a great conversation with a great man. And I would love to have a conversation with Jake Gyllenhaal. That's right. So if anyone within the power of our voices uh, has a connection, yeah. has an in. Send them, send them my way. I would love to video chat with that man. Uh-huh. It's funny because as we were preparing for this, like obviously Dr. Fauci, I mean, he put out there that, you know, he wanted Brad Pitt to play him and then boom, right like that. Oh my gosh. Brad Pitt's yeah. playing him on Saturday Night Live. So... You know, the old, like, you have to manifest it. I'm going to secret Jake Gyllenhaal right into my life. There you go. It is kind of cool to to have the platform and be like, you know what? It would be a cool conversation. I think everybody has, you know, a, like a bucket list of if I could meet somebody, if I could have lunch with them or just, you know, sit at their feet and learn from them. Whether that's, you know, Martin Luther King or Gandhi or, you know, somebody alive, somebody famous, a sports mm-hmm. persona, something. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> now you're trying to figure out who you would want to have lunch with or sit at the feet? Podcast wise is like, you know, Brene Brown, Dan Siegel or Bessel van der Kolk or, or things like that. By the way, side note, if you like Dan Siegel, I just came across that he has like unlimited amounts of video of training on his website. Um, I think it's mm-hmm. Mindsight or something. And it's $99 yeah, yeah. a month for unlimited access. I'm just putting it out there. If you've nice. reached the end of the internet or the end of Netflix like I have, <laughs> then you've moved on to Dan Siegel's website. Should possibly come at the front of the internet for a lot of people, with especially like the whole brain parenting <laughs> kind of stuff in the, in the midst of quarantine. Totally. And of course, I have to throw the Gottmans in there. I mean, I'm level two trained myself. I'm not, not quite there to the certified. I'm, I'm working my way there. In terms of some of the other things that you have a hand in, in terms of seven principles workshops, and then the the wives experiment, Mm -hmm. can you can you kind of unpack? I mean, just kind of taking you back, I'm sitting in uh, the conference room at the Gottman Institute. And I actually have the book. I mean, it sits on my desk. It's seven principles for making marriage work. It's one of Dr. Gottman's, I think it's probably the most popular book. He did a rewrite about three or four years ago, and it hit a million copies sold. It's been translated in like over 30 languages, just a really popular, incredible book. And I think the reason why it's so popular is that um, it just, it really resonates from, from a very personal level where you're reading the book and you're thinking, this makes so much sense. I can see this in my relationship and it translates on a scientific research-based level as well. And being based in Seattle, you have to speak to all of the engineers that come to Seattle and speak on their their language, their terms, which is show me the facts, show me the figures. And it's been pretty great. So based on all of his research, he basically put together a really succinct version of these are seven principles for you to live your relationship by. And some of it is replacing old habits with new habits, like the four horsemen, kicking those behaviors out of the relationship by shifting the way that you communicate with your partner, all the way up to sort of having a next, like dreaming in your relationship and having goals that you're setting and um, having conversations about rituals. So while I'm in this boardroom, 
we have all of these people around the world that keep asking for materials. They're teaching from the book and we know they're teaching um, in India and in Europe and in Australia from the book, but there's nothing. And we just said, well, why don't we just start training all of these non-clinicians that are working with couples and clinicians as well, how to use that seven principles book as their resource, their go-to guide in, in a couple's workshop setting. And so we developed the curriculum. I wrote the workbook that corresponds with the seven principles book. And now we've been teaching thousands from all over the world every year, mostly in Seattle, but sometimes we fly out to other locations, um, teaching these people how, if you are in a community-based setting and you're working with couples, how can you host your own seven principles workshop? Uh, For anybody that's interested, I mean, just going to the Gottman Institute website, you can get to all the different places that they have the workshop. Prior to this, you know, it was like, Every week, you know, somewhere it was being put yeah. on. So, so yeah, the Seven Principles Workshop has been amazing. It's something I do on a pretty regular basis. I, I have a teaching partner in Salt Lake. And so we have a pretty regular workshop that we're hosting for couples. Um, and then if you're a clinician or, or someone who works with couples and you want to learn how to host your own workshop, then come to Seattle. I think probably the next one on the calendar, we've sort of cleared our calendar, um, is going to be in October, unfortunately. So it's a little ways out. Uh, any luck that they're going to put the level three training online? <laughs> no, unfortunately. I mean, we'll if I, if I whine and <laughs> kick enough. I know it's been asked, but it's very hands-on. So, I mean, as soon as this hit, I fired an email out and was like, please tell me. <laughs> and they're like, nope. <laughs> I want to do it virtually. Yeah. Well, the nice part is if you have, I mean, 10 or less, right. is kind of the idea of numbers of people mm-hmm. gathered. If you have, a master trainer and you put together a cohort and you're 10 or less, I think you could probably talk a master trainer into hosting a level three. Um, So I believe in your power of persuasion. (laughs) There you go. I can, I can manifest (laughs) that. (laughs) You're listening to OTC episode 39 with Laura Heck, co-host of the marriage therapy radio show. We'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. Wives Experiment begins on May 18th. I don't want you to miss out on registration, so hop over to laurasexperiment.com and claim your seat at the table of epicness. Laura's Experiment is spelled L-A-U-R-A-S experiment.com. This is a month-long experiment jam-packed with weekly live teachings, three experiments a week to put into action what you have learned, live Q&A calls, accountability to keep you honest, and peer support from other epic wives for only $59 you can join the hundreds of women from around the globe and participate in this hands-on opportunity to learn grow and act in your relationship head over to laurasexperiment.com to register Are you interested in hearing about the Epic Wives Experiment? Yes, yes, please. So the Epic Wives Experiment is, I mean, I just get so excited thinking about it because it really started off as an experiment. My teaching partner, Nate Bagley, based out of Utah, um, had been really in close relationship with a lot of men and was hearing all of these complaints that men were having. And it was on a deeper level than what you would think men would complain to other men about. And it was around the idea of not feeling worthy, not feeling um, respected in their relationship, desiring to feel desired uh, by their partner. And not just sexually, but feel like, you know, my partner enjoys seeing my naked body, enjoys, you know, kissing me on the lips with passion. And man, we got really interested in what does this mean for the relationship and how can we work with one single partner to affect change 
um, on a global scale in, in that relationship. So we thought, where do we go with this? And most of the time, I mean, our audience was mostly women at the time. So we said, well, well, let's start with women and let's understand where women's pain points are and how we can help them to become just amazingly epic wives. Because as much as these men were complaining about not feeling worthy, not feeling desired, not feeling like their partner respected them, all of these things, women also had very similar complaints. And so we called it the epic wives experiment because we really didn't want, and we didn't know what the the outcome would be, to be perfectly honest. We just wanted women to have a place for accountability and have a place to be able to learn about how to show up differently in their relationship that would ease their pain points. And their pain points were feeling overburdened, feeling like they were carrying the emotional load of the relationship. The women were feeling like they were just completely tapped out. They didn't want to connect with their partner sexually. They desired emotional connection, but not physical connection. And so we started working with these women and it's a month long experiment where every single week we're teaching in this live process of having these women in this Facebook group. And we had 400 in our very first launch. And so you're joining with 400 women. We're teaching you on Monday and then you go home and you have an experiment on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And these are like little things for you to do in the relationship to show up differently. And just to give you an idea, I had mentioned the golden retriever, which was one of the experiments, um, was, you don't necessarily have to tell your partner you're doing this. And it's kind of fun if you don't, because then you just get to stand back and watch how their partner perceived it. Things like meeting your partner at the door and greeting them at the door and making them feel special when they walk in and, you know, enveloping them in just a really big hug and being persistent. But it was also a really, I would say, evaluated process where we were asking a lot of women that are experiencing resistance and bumping up against discomfort in trying some of these things of figuring out what's underneath that. So gosh, I mean, it was so powerful and we were getting the most amazing responses from these women where they were saying, I came home last night and my husband made dinner for me. He drew me a bath. I had flowers on the table. And this is a man who has no idea that she is in this experiment, right? He's just all of a sudden doing these things, leaning into the relationship differently. And so by just working with the female, we were able to enact so much change in the relationship over that month that it was creating momentum and joy and just a feeling of um, control that a lot of women didn't feel before. And so anyway, that's the Epic Wives Experiment. We have our, our next one is coming up on May 18th. So if anyone's interested, I, I would say sign up before May May 17th because the doors close and it's a pretty amazing experience. Awesome. To me, it, the idea of just those little changes, those little things, you know, it doesn't have to be such a such a you know monumental thing and like you said it doesn't even have to be something you communicate to your partner yeah and for a lot of women it was so internal too i mean it was like the experience of how they were viewing their partner or their relationship was shifting and it was very internal and but it still showed up differently well i was going to point that out too the i mean, think most people come to couples counseling, especially with like, you need to change the other person. You need to fix them. And a lot of times you have to change yourself. Totally. I feel like couples therapy is just individual therapy happening simultaneously. And I know a lot of people, maybe people who are listening to your podcast are are recognizing that my partner would never go to therapy with me. How can I still show up in this relationship or have an impact on the trajectory of the relationship if it's just me? And that's what I love about the Epic Wives experiment is so many women do want to transform the relationship and are doing it alone. And this is an amazing way to be able to do that. And then after the fact, you better believe we have these men that are hunting us down and saying, when is the husband's experiment going to be? I want to do it. So stay tuned. Okay. So it's a to be continued. It Uh, is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You you got so much response off the Epic Wives. We haven't gotten to the... (laughs) I know. Yeah. We'll figure that part out. Right now, we really just want to focus on continuing to serve our our wives and um, 
And if you're in a same sex relationship, absolutely, this still applies. Um, so I think that, and you don't have to be married either. So as long as you're in a committed relationship, this would be a great way to do it. We just ask that our genders, if you are female, you're in the Epic Wives experiment. I think you hit the nail on the head there with not to be stereotypical, but yes, uh, a lot more uh, females seek out couples counseling. And sometimes, not always, uh, a lot of male partners don't uh, cross the threshold of our doorway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think you just sort of speak to speak to whoever's listening and, um, and you go, you bring in the person or you, you capture the person that's most interested. And if it's the female, then we're going to win the male over eventually because he's going to feel differently in his relationship. Um, which is why I think the Epic Wives experiment is such an amazing entry into having couples pursue their relationship differently than they were before, because sometimes you just have to create that momentum. And this is enough to put the sail behind or the wind behind your sails. With Epic Wives, are you also kind of giving a little bit of the like, okay, four horsemen and soft startups and stress reducing conversations and things like that? I think we absolutely talk. We do talk about the stress reducing conversation. The way that it turns out with the stress reducing conversation is, and this one kind of blew my mind, is we recognize while interviewing these men what was it like, who do you turn to when you're feeling stressed out? And overwhelmingly, they were saying my wife, my partner. And when we ask women, who is it that you turn to when you're feeling stressed out? They had 10 people. They, I mean, they literally could say, boy, I could be sitting on the park bench and burst into tears. And the stranger that's sitting next to me becomes my, my, you know, confidant for the next 20 minutes as I completely, you know, unleash everything that's stressing me out. And I can call my mom, I can call my sister, I can talk to my best friend, I can uh, talk to my barista and they'll listen. So we found that men really, really need and rely on their female partners um, in particular to be that person that they're going to, to be able to talk. And so when working with women specifically, it's how do you give them the space? to communicate that to you? How do you invite them into a safe space where they can share some of the soft, vulnerable places of themselves and feel like they're by being vulnerable and, um, kind of unarmoring themselves that it's a safe place and that they get something from it. Um, and talking to them about that point of view. So we do absolutely talk about some of these things. We have a course that is sort of like the next level. Once you've done the Epic Wives experiment or, you know, the upcoming Epic Husbands experiment, now you might be ready as a couple to do Say What You Need to Say. And that's an entire course that really teaches you the communication and conflict patterns of how to work through tough stuff as a couple. So that's where we really dive deeper into the Four Horsemen, um, Gentle Startup, Repair, all of that good stuff. Yeah, the the stress reducing conversation I mean, I myself stop and start a lot of times where like I'll jump in with something and I'm like, oh, crap, I'm problem solving. I'm like I'm giving unsolicited advice instead of, you know, connecting emotionally and listening to my partner. I find that we do that so, so much. And I can definitely see where um, a lot of a lot of wives, a lot of girlfriends. Um, yeah, they have those other supports, but a lot of times they don't get that from their husbands a lot of times or their boyfriends uh, because they get a lot of the problem solving and it turns into a, a fight usually is, is what I find. Is that? Would you... Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Cause I mean, if you are going to be vulnerable and you're going to lay your armor down and allow your partner to see the softer sides of you, um, it's really, you have to trust that they're going to show up for you in the way that you need them to. And uh, I, man, I heard this advice from a friend of mine, um, who listens to the podcast and, and Craig said, you know, the way that I, I show up is quite often, I'll just ask my wife, what is it? How do you need me to show up for you right now? In this moment, do you need me to be your problem solver? Do you need me to be your caretaker? Do you need me to be a listener? Do you need me to hold that soft, gentle space for you? And um, being able to ask your partner what they need in the moment allows you to align in a more clear way with your partner in the way that they need you rather than trying to 
kind of play it like emotional charades. Like, uh, do you want me to be the problem solver? Oh, oh, nope, nope, not the problem solver. Okay. Do you want me to be like, uh, like somebody for you to like shoulder to cry on? Oh, nope. That's not what you need. So just ask, just be clear about what is it that, how do you want me to show up for you right now? Wow. Is, uh, is Craig a Gottman certified therapist as well? That's... He's, he's not, he, I mean, but Craig's incredible. He's, um, he he's really working on it. He consumes a lot of information. He's definitely a Gottman groupie. Okay. Um, well, and he's yeah. obviously, I mean, he's listening to your podcast, so. Right, so smart. He's just <laughs> a very smart guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, a lot of times I will teach that very thing that, that Craig does mm. is I'll tell people, yeah, you can ask, you, you know, what do you need from me? Do you need me to, you want my opinion? You want my advice? Or you're saying you just want me to shut up, look pretty and, you know, let you vent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, if only if only we could remember it in the moment of just telling our partner what we need from them. So, with all of this, you know, quarantine and COVID-19, what are some things you hope comes out of this and stays the same or like some positive things that that you want to have come out of this? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. I saw a quote and I wish I could remember it. Um, of course it was like a social media post of some sort, but it was basically along the lines of everyone keeps saying, I want us to get back to normal, but why don't we start evaluating what that normal was and why, what is it that we're really coming back to? And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that they have four extra hours on their hands that they were spending commuting. And what is it that I'm creating in that four extra hours that is for me, for my family? Um, and why am I wanting to go back to that? If, if I'm able to work from home and save myself four extra hours, what is it that I could do? What's the next, right? Maybe I could go to night school and I could, you know, do that thing that I always wanted to do because I have that time. So I think my hope is that people start to, I mean, after, gosh, we're six weeks into this now already, um, the amount of time it takes to break an old habit is, you know, maybe about a month and longer for some, but it might be a really great opportunity to just lean in and say, what are the things that I really do need to remove from my life? And, um, you know, did you really need that expensive gym membership? No, because you're getting a great workout in, you know, by running and just lifting water bottles mm -hmm. and not like light water bottles, <laughs> but you know, like 30 pound water bottles in my gym or, um, uh, you know, did I really need to be going and spending money at these restaurants? Well, not really, because I'm really enjoying the process of learning and completely failing at making pad thai <laughs> at home, but it was a great experience, yeah. right? Uh, so I think it's just a fun evaluation of being able to recognize what, what was your life like before and what, what is okay for you to let go of and say, this wasn't serving me. And I might've been on the fast track and I might've been just sort of plotting through life on autopilot and everybody's autopilot was pulled on. Yeah. And now everyone is having to really be intentional. And that's what I'm mostly happy about is that we're living an examined life at this moment. I'm hopeful that a couple of, uh, in addition to those, I thought those were, were great. I'm, one, I'm hopeful that teletherapy and telemedicine stays the same a little bit in that it's widely accepted, it's widely reimbursed, and everybody has access to it uh, is one thing. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm really anticipating a huge return to the outdoors, um, like camping and hiking and <laughs> Yeah. Anything outside of the house and away from a device. <laughs> but also, I, I think, a uh, return to, yeah, family and relationships and um, really taking stock of yes. the relationships that we do have. And, like, I have college roommates that we hadn't seen each other in years and we're like, why the heck did it take us so long to do like a Zoom happy hour? Yeah. <laughs> well, we could have been doing this all along and it took like global pandemic for us to realize like, oh yeah, duh. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of families where all of a sudden now families are connecting and having these regular Zoom calls on Sunday. They've created sort of this ritual. Um, and interestingly, I mean, talking to people, they're saying, I, I'm seeing cousins I've never seen, I've never met before. And it really is just like this swooping interest in reconnecting. And, and 
I mean, it's just a very interesting dynamic that's happening right now. <laughs> um, I'm really with you though on, on the outdoors. I've been spending a ton of time. I mean, like I said, I'll show you where I live. I'll send you a picture. It is a Mecca of outdoor fun time. Yeah. It's that cliche of like, you don't know what you had until, until it's gone. Yeah. 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 I don't know about you, but have you done any at home haircuts yet? <laughs> I'm uh follically challenged. Uh oh, okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> so I do mine all the time. <laughs> I I've I have not uh, my wife does not trust me to do hers or color hers or <laughs> um and and definitely the same with the seven year old. The two year old, he turns three this week, and I'm a little worried that I would like turn him into Van Gogh somehow because he just won't sit still. I'm worried I would like take an ear off or something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so we're just going to wait on that. <laughs> no, wait now. We'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll definitely yeah. <laughs> see. Uh, it's been really fun. Just I, that whole idea of we have outsourced our lives so much. And it yeah. was actually, I, I think in a lot of ways, there's such a push to outsource. Um, and a lot of people were saying, you know, focus on the things that matter, outsource things that don't like have somebody mow your lawn, um, have the house cleaner come into your home. Um, you know, buy, buy certain pre-made foods. And now we're just not outsourcing. And mm -hmm. for me, at least I feel a whole lot more competent and it's made life a, whole, a lot more interesting having to learn how to cut hair. I learned how to make bread for the first time and now I'm addicted. Um, <laughs> the low, the low, uh, calorie diet is out the window. I am fully into You're embracing the, the quarantine. I'm 15. Embracing yes. Embracing <laughs> it so hard. Now, are you, are you brewing your own beer or you haven't, you haven't gotten there yet? I wish. Um, we're actually doing, is it whiskey? Yeah. We're doing apple whiskey right now. Wow, man. I know. Are you now? Are you, I didn't see any, uh, recipes on Instagram. Are you holding out? What are you? <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to share a recipe unless it's been mastered. So I might have a, like a handful of botched, um, whiskey, <laughs> apple whiskey. We'll see. It was a, a kit. So this is so funny. We've had this kit in our garage and it has made three or four moves with us in the last 10 years. And my husband pulled it out and said, let's just sell this. We haven't used it. And then all of a sudden, probably three days later, He's doing like little science experiments. He's teaching my son measurements. And, um, and so we thought, okay, we're making whiskey. This is cool. Let's do it. There we go. Little yeah. side, side business there. <laughs> along yeah, with the, side hustle. There you go. Well, in the therapy where we go back to Mad Men and you can like day drink as a therapist, right. you can have your own, <laughs> your own apple whiskey. There you go. Well, at least, um, I mean, I joke because I've been doing virtual therapy with my clients exclusively for five years. And, um, I joke that, you know, you can, your clients can't smell your breath when you're doing virtual therapy. So that <laughs> mug may or may not be coffee. It's got a little whiskey. In it. Just a touch, just yeah. a touch of whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, well, Laura, thank you so much for being on. Is there any other, any parting wisdom? If you were speaking to every couple in the world or the country, What's something you would want them to know? You know, I think it comes down to, this is one of the great teachings that John Gottman has, is um, being curious about your partner's dreams and just putting putting your life on pause long enough to be curious about someone else and be curious about what their dreams are. And I think that's a really nice segue for talking about what your great next might be is just asking your partner, like, what dreams do you have right now? And if it's been a while since you've allowed yourself to dream and don't put any limits on it, but I mean, what would you, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to experience? What, what is something you want to accomplish in five years, 10 years, and just listen. And I think that that's a really great place to start is being curious about your partner's dreams. I'm glad you repeated it at the end because I was going to ask you to repeat it of like, wow, that's that's huge to take time to listen to your partner's dream. And if you're going to ask the question, listen to the answer. Yeah. And I p would say probably the next step is it's not just about listening, but be becoming your partner's biggest cheerleader and mm. um, really encouraging them to pursue their passions and their dreams and, and freeing up the resources, the time, and the money that it might take in order for them to make that dream come true. I can, I can tell you with full confidence that the moment you start focusing on being your partner's dream maker um, and encouraging them to go after it, it will transform the temperature of the relationship. 
I hesitate to ask whether you have any other projects in the <laughs> hopper. Um, after this, I'm going to be so depressed. of like, I'm not doing anything with my life. What is going on? <laughs> oh, you know, no, actually, I think that that is kind of it is, I mean, that's kind of that, it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's enough. I, you gotta, I, you gotta... I talk about all my projects. Yeah. Again, thank you for being on. Uh, thank you so much for being a mental health warrior, uh, for just, you know, being in that space and helping so many couples. I, on my end, I kind of got into this uh, because I really liked working with kids and teens. And I started to realize if I worked with the couples, maybe I can kind of head them off at the pass. Yeah. Like maybe I can get in and do some work before the, the kids struggle. So yeah. um, thank you so much for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. Take care. Thank you. So that, folks, was the amazing Laura Heck. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, just to kind of recap from the episode, you know, that idea of now now is the time to thrive. You know, uh, we are experiencing unprecedented circumstances. I know that that word's getting used ad nauseum. I'm sorry, but uh, it's true. And uh, yes, parts of it suck. Uh, parts of it are hard, but at the same time, um, we have a, a lot of people have an opportunity right now in their relationship to really focus on that and um, thrive, not not just you know shelter in place and wait till it's over. And um, I, I definitely recommend to anybody uh, picking up that that seven principles for making marriage work. Uh, whether you are married or not, it has amazing information and it has hands-on exercises that you can put into practice in any relationship, really. And uh, checking out the the Epic Wives experiments, um, you know, follow Laura's Instagram account. Uh, it's something I, I go to daily. And like I said, she's posting the right now the the coronavirus, you know, like quarantine conversation starters. And uh, they're they're really good conversation starters to just kick back and forth with your partner. The other talking about, yeah, what is your next or what is your partner's next? What's that next next dream or next project or next thing that you, you want to have a hand in? And if you're going to have these conversations, look at your partner, listen to your partner and support them. You know, that opportunity, like she was saying, to to be their, their cheerleader and, and really support that that dream or whatever that project is. And you'll, you'll see amazing results in your relationship from even implementing any one of these things. Um, but just imagine what could happen from doing, you know, even half of them. Uh, so I, I hope you all are doing well. I will catch you next episode. In OTC episode 40, I have the distinguished honor of bringing a conversation with Dr. Christine Moutier, Chief Medical Officer of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe and review wherever you're catching this podcast at. You can check out detailed show notes and archived episodes at www.pfsonthecouch.com. If you want to stay up to date on future guests and contribute questions, be sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms. The author and host of this podcast is not engaged in a therapeutic relationship with the listener and cannot give counseling advice without a confidential appointment. Listeners should be sure to consult with a licensed therapist in their area or seek emergency medical attention if they are experiencing psychological difficulty. A special thanks to the band The Topsy Turvies for the show theme song. Their song, Like a Living Dead, can be found at topsyturvies.bandcamp.com. The bump interview track was the song 1973 by Bruno E. The author and host of this podcast is John Dennis. Special thanks to editor and show producer Trevor Groff. <laughs>